Hi everyone, my name is Karol and we are from Atrian Singapore, which is a Malay dance group in Singapore. We are at Malay Heritage Centre to share with you how we celebrate Hari Raya Puasa or Ideal Fitri in Singapore. Before we begin the story of Hari Raya Puasa, let me share with you more about the holy month of Ramadan. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Muslim calendar in which Muslims all around the world abstain from eating and drinking as well as physical intimacy from dawn till dusk, which means they stop eating and drinking when the sun rises all the way till the sun sets. Young children, pregnant women and those who are not healthy enough to fast are not required to observe the fast. At the same time, Muslims are required to maintain positive intentions, perform good deeds, as well as acts of charity. Through the actions mentioned above, Muslims cultivate their patience, spirituality, self-control and empathy for the less fortunate. After a month long of fasting during the month of Ramadan, Muslims all around the world will celebrate Idil Fitri festival. Hari Raya refers to a day of celebrations in Malay, while Idil Fitri comes from the Arabic word Idil Fit, which means the festival of breaking fast. In Singapore and Malaysia, Idil Fitri is also known as Hari Raya Puasa and is the most celebrated Muslim festival. Idil Fitri also marks the start of a new month, Shawal. Some mistake the festival as the Muslim New Year but it's actually celebrating the first day of the 10th month of the Muslim calendar after the previous month of fasting. Muslims will also be busy preparing festive staples such as ketupat, usually woven with coconut leaves. However, for demonstration, we are using coloured ribbons instead. There will be other Malay delicacies such as various kuih mui, which means pastries and biscuits, to be served on Hari Raya Puasa. Preparation for Hari Raya Puasa is a family and community affair. The spirit of gotong royong or cooperation is still very much alive in the present day, especially so in the family kitchen during Ramadan and Hari Raya Puasa, as everyone will help out. I will tell you more about some of this delicious food in a while. Volunteers will also prepare food and drinks at the mosque to be distributed to the community before the break of fast. On the day of Hari Raya Puasa, usually the men will attend morning prayers at the mosque while the rest of the family members will be preparing the house to welcome guests or to visit their family and friends. Hari Raya Puasa is also a time to seek forgiveness for any wrongdoings over the past year. After morning prayers, families will usually seek forgiveness from the elders by saying Ma'au Zahir Dan Batin, which means please forgive my actual wrongdoings and bad thoughts towards you. After that, they will proceed to visit the homes of friends and family, all dressed up in their new clothes for a festive get-together. It is common to greet people with Salam Aidil Fitri or Selamat Hari Raya. Can you repeat after me? Salam Aidil Fitri. Selamat Hari Raya. Hari Raya Puasa is also a joyous day for children. In fact, Throughout the month of Shawal, children will be given a token sum of money, also known as duet raya, from their parents and elders as gifts. This is similar to the tradition of giving out red packets during Chinese New Year. Here are some questions for you. Number one, what does Hari Raya ID Fitri mean? Hari Raya refers to a day of celebrations in Malay, 
while ID Free Tree means the festival of breaking fast. Number two, what do Muslims do on the day of Hari Raya Puasa? On the day of Hari Raya Puasa, usually the men will attend morning prayers at the mosque while the rest of the family members will be preparing the house to welcome guests or to visit their family and friends. Hari Raya Puasa is also a time to seek forgiveness for any wrongdoings over the past year. Now, let me tell you a little more about the clothes worn during Hari Raya. First, we have here the Baju Kurung a loose-fitting traditional Malay outfit worn by women. The early baju kurung was longer and looser. The baju kurung is typically worn with a sarong that reaches their ankles. The sarong is tailored in the ikatan ombak mengalun or ikatan mengombak, which means with like snicks and stitches. Next, we have the baju kebaya a traditional blouse and dress combination that originated from Indonesia. The top is sometimes made from silk materials such as silk or tin cotton, decorated with woven pattern or floral embroidery. A kebaya is usually worn with a batik sarung or kain with motif. There are also several types of baju kebaya. Some examples include kebaya panjang, Kebaya Kota Baru and Kebaya Lida, which is what my friend here is currently wearing. In the Malay Heritage Centre's museum, you can see the Kerun Sang, a type of brooch traditionally used to pin together the baju kebaya. Can you repeat the word Kerun Sang after me? Good job! The Kerun Sang set usually consists of three pieces of brooches. The biggest one is the Ibu Kerun Sang, and Ibu means mother in Malay. The smaller pieces are called Anak Kronsang, which means child in Malay. The Kronsang is made of silver or gold and decorated with old mine cut diamonds called Intan in Malay. Did you know that they were Intan merchants in Kampung Glam in the past? In the 19th century, Banjaris merchants travelled from South Kalimantan, Indonesia to Singapore to trade these precious stones. Many kinds of jewellery such as the Kronsang were handed down as heirlooms in families from one generation to the next, something like a family treasure. The Baju Melayu is a traditional Malay outfit for men. The term Baju Melayu directly translates to Malay clothes. It consists of a shirt and trousers made of the same material. The baju melayu is worn with a samping, which is made of kain songket or sarong. Kain means fabric. A black or dark coloured traditional headgear called the songko can also be worn to complete the outfit. There are two distinctive colours which define the two different styles of baju melayu. The first color style is known as Cekak Musang and the other one is Teluk Belanga. Cekak Musang style has a standing color of about 1 to 2 cm. There used to be 5 buttons traditionally. However, modern stylings have reduced the number of buttonholes to 3. It is fastened together by studs and can be made from a variety of materials including gold, silver, or even precious stones. The Teluk Belanga style has no collar and the neckline is stitched in the style known as Tulang Belut. There is a loop at the end of the neckline to fit a kancing, which is a hook or button. Did you know that Teluk Belanga is also the name of a place in Singapore? The Baju Melayu is commonly worn in Singapore during festivals such as Hari Raya Puasa and Hari Raya Haji. It is also commonly worn on Fridays for prayers and for other formal events such as weddings. Before we continue, would you like to learn how to wear the samping? My friend here will demonstrate to you. If you have a piece of kain songket 
or sarong with you now, you can join me in learning how to wear it. First, step into the tube and bring the kain to the waist level. Position the kapala at the center of your back and fold in the excess cloth from both sides to the front center where they overlap. Lastly, secure the sarong by rolling the upper hem down over itself. Do you manage to get it? Let's try it again. Here are some questions for you. Number one, what is the name of the traditional headgear? The name of the traditional headgear is the Songko. Number two, can you name one female traditional outfit? We have the baju kurung and the baju kebaya. There are also several types of baju kebaya. Some examples include kebaya panjang, kebaya kota baru, and kebaya lida. Remember that I was going to tell you more about the food that is prepared for Hari Raya Puasa? The Malay community is known for its richly flavoured cuisines and a variety of sweet and savoury dishes are served during the festival. Some of the dishes are Ketupat Boiled rice wrapped in woven coconut leaves Lontong Boiled rice cake in a fragrant vegetable stew Ayam masak merah Chicken in a spicy red sauce Rendang Meat dish that is slow cooked in coconut milk and spices Sambal goreng Long beans with tempeh and tofu in chilli paste And surrounding Fried grated coconut All these dishes will be placed on a tikka mengkuang Or on the dining table And family and friends will be invited to taste these dishes Families will give thanks for the food to show gratitude before they dig in. You can also find baked pastries such as kueh tart, pineapple tart, which is one of the common kueh that you can find during Chinese New Year, Hari Raya and Deepavali. Kueh dahlia, butter cookie shaped like a flower. Kueh bahulu, egg sponge cake Kueh makmur Cookie filled with chopped peanuts Kueh cornflakes No big honey cornflakes cluster When I was younger, I remember that my grandmother would grate coconuts in the kitchen using this particular tool called a coconut grater also known as kukur kelapa in Malay. Make a guess, how can you grate the coconut with this? That's right, you will need to sit on the low stool and grate the coconut's flesh with the sharp spike-like blade in front. You will need to hold one half of a coconut shell and grate the white flesh against the blade in an up and down motion. Some water is then added to squeeze out the milk or you can use the grated flesh as it is, depending on what the recipe calls for. Can you see the beautiful carvings on it? What do you see? Wood carving is an art form that's important in the Malay culture. Did you know that there are also competitions in search of the most beautiful kukur kelapa? You can also find kukur kelapa in other cultures too. Here are some questions for you. Number one, have you tried any of the dishes that I've mentioned? Number two, name one traditional dish served during Hari Raya Puasa. When Hari Raya Puasa is around the corner, you will usually hear festive songs on the radio, malls or shops. 
The songs usually talk about the meaning of Hari Raya, preparation, food, visiting, celebrations, and asking forgiveness from each other. It can be in a slow melody or an upbeat tempo. Today, Hari Raya Puasa songs have evolved into all kinds of genre, but they continue to bring festive joy or even moments of reflection on the significance of the occasion. Some examples are Selamat Hari Raya by Sanisa Huri. Nazam Lebaran by Siti Nohaliza. Kenangan di Hari Raya by Hadi Mirza and Taufik Batisa. Together with Rahima Rahim, Selamat Hari Raya. We will now demonstrate seven simple movements based on one of the five basic genres in Malay dance, which is Inang. Inang is a dance movement which is lively and has a joyous melody accompanying it. It was once known to be a dance performed in the palace for the Sultan and his guests. In today's context, Inang is presented for everyone to enjoy in joyous occasions such as Hari Raya celebrations. Now, join us in celebrating Hari Raya Puasa with this dance.
We have come to the end of our sharing today. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and gained a better understanding about Hari Raya Puasa or Aidil Fitri. We wish all of you Selamat Hari Raya, Maaf Sahib dan Batin.